This is a short tutorial of how to work with a VLOOKUP function. For function basics and terminology, please watch the previous tutorial. We will be using a simple to understand example, which is similar to the one in your Chapter 2 Grader project from my IT lab. Let's analyze a bit the worksheet in our demo example. Notice that the worksheet contains four places with information that is given, such as customer's name, then customer's type of membership, then the 2013 total customer purchases, and here notice that I chose whole numbers so that we can easily watch the changes and assess what the function does. And the last piece of given information can be seen in the small colored table at the bottom of your worksheet in the cell range A18 through C20. I previously named this range Membership. Note that the membership cell range does not include the table headers. This is called a lookup table and is nothing else but a place from where information can be pulled when needed. More about how to build a lookup table in another tutorial. But in our specific example, this cell range contains general membership information about membership types, discount and membership costs. The data in this table will be the information pool for our lookup function. Now notice the information in red font. This is the information that needs to be extracted from the worksheet's given information. In the first empty column, we need to display the discount that each customer will receive according to the membership type they have. Remember from our previous tutorials that the best function to use for displaying specific data from a pool of general information is in the lookup and reference category in the functions library. In our example, the appropriate discount for each member needs to be displayed based on the data provided in our lookup membership table. The lookup function can be found on the ribbon in the formulas tab in the functions library grouping. Here is where all functions are organized by categories. From the available lookup functions, we will choose the VLOOKUP function because the data in our table is categorized vertically. VLOOKUP stands for Vertical Lookup and HLOOKUP would stand for Horizontal Lookup for a table where data is categorized horizontally on rows. Let's now build the VLOOKUP function. In cell C5, we will construct the VLOOKUP function for the first customer in the table. Andrews, and then we will copy the formula down to the remaining customers. Keep in mind that when the formula is copied to other customers, their cell references need to change relative to the copied formula. This means that we need to make the cell that references the customer relative. Also keep in mind that the membership information will always be pulled from the same location. The cell range A18 through C20, which is our named membership lookup table. This means that the referenced cells must be absolute. Now let's really build the VLOOKUP function. For this, select first cell C5, where we need to display the discount for the first customer, Andrews. Remember that we do not want to just type the value listed in the table, which for Andrews is 30% as a business member, but we want Excel to do the lookup for us. For this, click Insert Function button to the left of the formula bar. This will open the Insert Function dialog box, where you can search and read the details about different functions. Because I already know what function I need to use, I will type lookup in the search for a function text box. Then click Go button and select VLOOKUP from the list of available options. Then click OK button or Enter and the function arguments dialog box will open. For more complex functions, I always recommend using the function arguments dialog box and also the semi-selection method, which allows you to double check the correctness of your function and to avoid typing errors. As you can notice in the dialog box, the required arguments are bolded and the regular font arguments are optional. The VLOOKUP function has four arguments, three required and one optional. In our case, we need to use all of them. The first argument for this function is the lookup value. 
We are building the function for the first customer, Andrews, and we need to know what type of member he is. The membership information is stored in cell B5 and Andrews has a business membership. Remember that we want to be able to replicate the formula for the other customers, so instead of using the actual text value, which in this case is business, we need to use the cell reference, B5. I like using the semi-selection method to select the cell reference. Press Tab key to advance to the next field to input the second argument, table array. The table array argument is in fact the cell range of the lookup table. In our example, A18 through C20, which contains general information from where we pull the specific data for each customer. Notice that our table array has three rows and three columns. We will select the cell range using the semi-selection method and be sure not to select the heading of the table. If you remember, I previously named our lookup table, so as soon as I select the range, the table array argument will display its given name, membership, instead of displaying the cell range, A18 through C20. Note that it would have been absolutely okay to type the cell range for the lookup table. But because this cell range was previously given a name, then instead of the A18 through C20, you will see its name, Membership. Naming the cell ranges has the advantage of you not having to remember to make the cell range absolute. Press Tab to advance to the next field for the third argument to input the column index number argument. As the name indicates, we need to identify the number of the column that contains the discount information. You can see that this is the second column in our lookup table. So, we will type 2 in this field. Press Tab to advance to the next and last argument field, Range Lookup. This argument is optional, but in our example is essential to add it because, as you can see from the small definition displayed lower in the dialog box, we need Excel to look and display the exact value of our discount. To find an exact match, we will need to type the word FALSE in this field. If we would have just wanted the closest match, we would have needed to type the word TRUE or leave this field blank. More about this in another tutorial. Make sure not to introduce by mistake a blank space after or before any argument and then click the OK button to save the function and close the dialog box. You can now see the result of the VLOOKUP function displayed in cell C5. And in the formula bar on the ribbon, you can also view the formula syntax and double check that the enter arguments are correct. Verify with your general information table that the discount for the first customer is 30%. And all that is left to do now is to replicate this formula by copying it to the other customers. With the cell C5 active, move the cursor over to the lower right corner of the cell so that it becomes a black cross. Then click it and drag it up to the last customer and then release the mouse. The entire selected range is populated with the discount percentages. Verify to see if the function displays the correct values, and notice that all no membership customers have 0% discount, all the regular members have 15% discount, and all the business members have 30% discount. As a final check, let's inspect the VLOOKUP function in cell C13. Then click the Insert function to the left of your formula bar in the ribbon. This will open the function arguments dialog box with all the details about this function. Notice that the cell reference for the lookup value argument changed to cell B13, which is no membership. But all the other arguments are the same as for the first customer because they were absolute, which is exactly how the function should look like in this case. Click Cancel to close the function arguments dialog box. And this ends the tutorial about how to construct the VLOOKUP function. If you would like to know how to build the IF function from our demo example, please watch the next tutorial.